All right, thank you, Brian. So welcome to the Board of Selectmen meeting for Tuesday, February 9th, 2021. Um, unfortunately, we're gonna start this evening's meeting with uh, some very sad news. So uh, Senior Town Council Charles Zeroulis uh, died uh, Lowell General on January um, uh, 31st, 2021. So I'm just gonna say a little something about Charles and, and then I'm gonna pass it to Ms. Stronick uh, being one of the senior members on the board. So. Um, just very short, sure. Charles was uh, born and raised in Lowell. Uh, Charles graduated from the Bartlett School, uh, Lowell High School, and Suffolk University with Bachelor's of Arts degree from Suffolk Law School. Uh, Charles served town council, the town of Tewksbury, from 1968 to 2021. 53 years um, of service to, to the town of Tewksbury. Um, so he had a great love for this community and obviously very active in Lowell as well. Um, his knowledge of municipal law can never be and will never be matched. Um, he served Tewksbury with the highest level of pride, dignity, honesty that we could ever ask for um, for, for, for town council. So um, he was a very caring man, very giving man. I'm sure Anne Marie will um, echo those comments, so he will be missed by all. So we send our condolences um, to his wife of 34 years, Jackie, and his two daughters, uh, Catherine and Alexandra his brother Andrew, and the entire Zerulis family. So Charles, um, Charles will be missed. So uh, at this point, I just pass it to Ms. Stronach to say a few words. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I um, was so sad and um, really came with a heavy heart to hear of Charles passing. And um, I just thought back to when I first became a member of this board and how, um, caring he was in explaining the rules to us. And I know that he's taken that time with every member of this board, uh, both past and present, um, to make sure that they understood and that we upheld our responsibilities. He was very good at providing us with constructive feedback in a way that allowed us to serve our community better. So I, I think about Charles, and I think about his love for this community, as you mentioned, Mr. Chairman, but I also think about his commitment to service of his community and how he put that above all else centered in the love of his family. You didn't have a conversation with Charles where he didn't talk about his wife or his daughters or his grandchildren, who he was all so proud of. And um, it's a tragedy um, that the COVID complication took the best of him from us, but his legacy and the things that he has taught all of us will carry on um, through the work that we do in many uh, meetings to come. And I just wanna thank him for his service. And on behalf of the town, I want to um, ask that we take a page in our minutes today to memorialize um, Attorney Zerulis and thank him for his service. Um, I would request that we do that in our minutes, Mr. Chairman. And I would also request a moment of silence um, honoring Attorney Charles Zerulis, who served Tewksbury with the utmost integrity. Thank you very much, Ms. Stronach. Uh, powerful words. Um, and what I'd like to do now is just pass it to Mr. Kratman before we get started with our schedule items. Mr. Kratman um, is also gonna talk about something that happened in Tewksbury, I believe it was called, um, the gas explosion in 1972. So Mr. Kratman, the floor is yours. Uh, yes, I was uh, reached out to a uh, former member of our fire department, Mr. Ed Kearns, whose son is our current fire chief. And he, um, Call me to remind me that uh, this is the 49th anniversary of the low gas explosion, which uh, rocked this community. And unfortunately, we lost uh, lives and many people were hurt. Um, so uh, he asked that we remember, they will never forget. And they are asking that our community never forget. And if we could also have a moment of silence for those who suffered through that tragedy and uh, community that had recovered from it.
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Mr. Kratman. <clears throat> All right, with that being said, well, let's jump into the agenda. So our first item is residents. Brian, do we have any residents on? Mr. Chairman, we will have a resident calling in when we get to the license uh, fees, I believe. Okay. I typically break the rules as the chair. I would like to have the resident speak first, and then we're going to okay, go about business. I, but that was my fault, Mr. Chairman. I can call the resident back. Okay, please let's let's do that. Let's let's jump into the um, let's jump into the license fees because I know there's like a thirty second delay or a minute delay, so that'd be awesome. Let's call the resident back and let's hear the resident. Um, and let's jump into the agenda. So licenses fee. So, um, Mr. Kratman, we brought this up on the agenda, I think a few times, as far as what we can do for local businesses, um, and especially around the beer and liquor sales, as we all know, um, that that sector, that business sector has been hit tremendously over the last nine months. So, Mr. Kratman, what I'd like to do is kind of give you the floor, um, kind of tell the residents, again, what we're talking about, what we're thinking about, um, and let's just have an open discussion and see where it goes. Oh, well, Brian, did you say, uh, Mr. Crabman, one a second. I'm sorry, Mr. Crabman. Brian, did you say the resident's back on the line? We do have the resident, Mr. Chairman. Okay, please. Okay. And just for the resident, just a name and address, please, for the record. Yes, my name is Susan Amado. My address is 749 North Street in Tewksbury. But I'm also a business owner, and I'm calling. I'm calling to talk about the licensing and the fees please the floor is yours susan excuse me the floor is yours oh thank you very much so i had a, written a letter um a while ago it's it's been very frustrating and i know everyone in this town has had things that have happened due to COVID. But the businesses in this town have suffered immensely. The, you have to think about the businesses that bring the money in, bring the people in from other towns. That's who we should be taking care of. And when you talk about the, the liquor license, I get, you know, my business is down 70%. 70% and I'm lucky I'm still my doors are still open but my people are still hired I'm still able to pay them and I pay all my fees whether it's my house fee or my business fees everything is paid and I feel strongly that the town they need to think about how can we help these businesses because they're the ones that are bringing people to our town and spending money. And right now, as a business owner and a resident, I feel that we've just been ignored. I feel everything that I've done and every day that I stay open, it's because of me. It's because of what I have done. And I, tr I really feel that the town needs to step up and help all of us. Okay, very good. Well said. Thank you, Susan. Um, thank you very much for the comments. And we're going to jump into it right now as a board and have those discussions and see where it goes. So thank you very much. And you do have a wonderful restaurant and wonderful staff. So I thank you for that very much. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Bye-bye. All right, Mr. Dorian, any, any other residents? Uh, not at this time, Mr. Chairman. So what, what, I just want to be careful. So let's go ahead and, and, and close down the residence section to let me know if someone calls in and we'll go from there. So Mr. Crapman, uh, the floor is yours, license and fees. Why don't we just give an update of kind of where we were at, some of the discussions, our thought process. And again, that's why it's on the agenda because we, we, we truly want to help and we know the situation um, you know, has, been, has been rough. So Mr. Crapman, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so uh, through my economic development team, we've uh, done a little bit of research. We've looked to see what's happening uh, in our community. Uh, we've uh, also through the chamber, I'm on the board of directors of the chamber, and we've had numerous meetings with uh, economic development, talking with local businesses that have come forward uh, to us to tell us about how they've been struggling. Um, asking for assistance and we've been giving them guidance on how to do certain things and how to apply for certain things and uh, 
we've been looking at what's happened in the community. Um, one of the things that we had during our discussion um, was the fees. And, um, you know, we are, we're asking the businesses to be paying a fee, uh, which they usually do, and they gladly pay it every single year. Um, but the fee is for a license. And, you know, the license usually is a fully operational license. Um, right now, during COVID, um, you know, due to state restrictions, uh, the businesses aren't able to use those licenses as they have in the past to their full ca capability. Uh, businesses have either been limited to completely closing or down to 25% capacity or 40% capacity or, uh, you know, limited hours of what they can stay open to. And, uh, you know, what their usual normal business hours aren't even close to what they've been doing. Um, we did some research to see what was going on in surrounding communities and uh, a number of different communities have taken action on it and waived fees either completely or at a reduced fee. Uh, Drakeit, Chelmsford, Tingsboro, Winchester, Bill Ricker, surrounding communities that are in our, our area have uh, taken action on it. And uh, I, I'd like to have the discussion with the board to see their thoughts on it. Um, Talking with my economic development team, they would like to see us do something to show that we are supporting businesses. Uh, when this is over, we're going to be competing to bring businesses to our community. We have a lot of open storefronts. We get a lot of places that are closed. Some of them due to COVID, some of them not due to COVID. But there are some places that are open and we are competing with our surrounding communities. And we want to show that. This is a town that is willing to work with businesses and um, and uh, help them when they're struggling. Um, my recommendation, if you would like it now, um, is to uh, waive the fees to 50% of what the uh, the licenses are right now, and that would be for all alcoholic uh, licenses for the restaurants and bars and um, the beer and wine ones for the restaurants and bars and uh, the club licenses. We have four club licenses for uh, different uh, things. The uh, gun and water gun club, the Knights, the Elks, and the, uh, I think I can read off the four, but we have, we have a list in front of us of the number of licenses. And uh, my suggestion would be to waive that to 50% and help them through the difficult times and hopefully, you know, collect full fees going forward. But uh, that would be a one time uh, waive of fees and, and uh, suggestion. So I'll put that in its okay. motion and listen to what the rest of the board wants to discuss. All right, before I go to the, thank you, Mr. Crabby, before I go to the board, Mr. Martori, you know, we, we've been um, trying to keep a, a, a pulse on this as far as stimulus packages and how grants might apply, because uh, it's very complicated, you know. You, you, the, so can you just outline for the residents what we have done to date? I know we've had a meeting, um, I believe it was a month ago, whatever, give or take, but what we've done to date and if Mr. Crapman's proposal, again, we're going to have an open discussion. Uh, what are we talking as far as dollars if we were to uh, apply Mr. Crapman's uh, motion of 50%? So, of 50%. Just, okay, so if I just want to make sure, so we, <clears throat> that's all alcoholic restaurants, beer and wine restaurants. Um, if I heard them right, uh, the club licenses, and did you include the in-holder licenses, uh, Mr. Crappen? No, I did not. I, I, okay, didn't, so. I, didn't, I didn't think that was, I, I just did the other three. I thought those yep. were more suitable for what we what who have really been impacted at this point. Okay. I just want to make sure which I had. So that that revenue is forty four thousand five hundred dollars. If you did a fifty percent reduction. Um, to date, we have waived fees for the entertainment licenses uh, fees to twenty three businesses. Um, amusement licenses, which are seventy five dollars per device. They would not be uh, eight um, devices uh, licensed in the community. Um, so those fees have been waived so far. Um, in the past, uh, during COVID, uh, we've tried to help businesses uh, streamline permitting, um, waiving fees on the permitting, um, you know, allowing them for uh, outdoor seating, um, and being as flexible as we uh, we, we uh, possibly could. 
Um, so th that's kind of what we've done over the past um, month and past uh, you know, 10 months uh, in regards to businesses. Thank you, Mr. Montori. All right, uh, um, let's have some discussion here. How about Mr. Tronic? We'll start, you can bet first. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I have given this a tremendous amount of thought and I'm going to, um, first of all, I want to thank the Economic Development Committee. I want to thank the um, local businesses for all of the work that they've done. Um, I think that these are challenging times for everyone and I really appreciate the work that uh, my colleague, Mr. Kratman has done with those organizations. And I appreciate the proposal that has been put forward. I want to take us back uh, back to about a month ago when we began this discussion. And I was concerned about the entertainment fees um, and worried that um, if we were going to begin down this road, that we would open ourselves up. Um, at the same time, when we are trying to be flexible and trying to make adjustments for everyone, I think it's important to note that um, similar to what the residents who called in Susan had to say, everybody has been touched by COVID in um, a way that has impacted them financially. I can think of ways my, in my own home that have impacted and I am not alone in that. Um, and I think about all of the residents that we have to compete with. And um, obviously everybody wants to um, look at one particular group, but I feel it's incumbent upon us to look at the community as a whole. And when we looked at the entertainment licenses, I was made some comments about our revenues, um, our loss of revenues. And at that time we had asked Mr. Montori to um, tell us what we he was anticipating lost revenues would be from this year from all the sales tax my concern is is that we did entertainment we now have in front of us alcohol i think about businesses pizza places that don't serve alcohol who have also been impacted smaller restaurants that have been impacted um and while i am not opposed to supporting businesses i think that there needs to be more of a process to find out who needs the help the most. So I was thinking that a way to do this and um, I would have to, um, through the chair, ask Mr. Montori if this is even possible, but if we could think of some kind of um, hardship waiver or something similar to that where people could um, basically show because I, I'm not sure what people have gotten in terms of, I know that they have been, um, we talked about last time, I had mentioned that maybe we should be giving businesses resources to help with uh, grant funding and COVID relief, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm not sure, I think that Mr. Kratman mentioned that his committees are working on some of those efforts. And so I'm not sure if some businesses were a little bit, um, had more ability or capacity within their organization to tap some of those funds that um, could assist them as well. But my concern is, is that um, by carving out individuals, we are um, almost creating some special interest. And I think about our residents, as we know, um, our seniors have been hard hit with this as well. And I think about if I'm able to give um, money back to our businesses, how do I address our residents? So I am going to propose rather than a 50% and I would like to hear the town manager's thoughts on this. Um, if we could do some type of waiver, uh, hardship waiver, or, you know, I was where this thought process came was through like the abatement process. I'm not saying that that's the process, but similar to that vein. I don't know how others feel about that, but 
I would be much more inclined to look at this um, on an individual basis um, and <clears throat> determine it based on need rather than uh, carte blanche um, for all licenses with alcohol. So that's what I have to add to the conversation at this point. Looking forward to hearing what others' thoughts are because I am extremely open-minded about any and all options when it comes to supporting efforts in relief as it relates to COVID and the, you know, the challenges that has been posed on, imposed on all of us by this virus. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Onik. Okay, why don't we just keep, let's continue the discussion. How about Ms. Wellman? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Kratman had made a motion, um, so I wanted to second it for discussion so that we're sort of being a little bit more formal about it. Um, and I wanted to make some comments uh, both on his uh, proposal and then also on um, Ms. Tronick's uh, proposal or, or her comments um, and suggestions, which I think are very interesting. Um, I agree with Mr. Kratman. We've been talking about this and doing our due diligence and, and we've asked the manager to, um, you know, give us the numbers and, and the understanding of, of what the impacts are. I think that um, uh, holistically, there's sort of a surgical and there's a blunt approach uh, to the problems that we're trying to um, help solve or sort of alleviate. We're not really solving them, but trying to alleviate the pain um, that some of our business owners are experiencing. Um, and to Ms. Stronick's point, some business owners are experiencing more uh, hardship than others. Um, based on, on grants or PPP loans and so forth that they may have already been able to secure. Um, regarding Mr. Kratman's proposal, I support that. Um, I would support a 50% um, refund actually at this point of their fees. Um, we know that this sector is hurting tremendously um, and it's it's universal. It's not, it's not unique really to any particular um, restaurant, they're all really suffering at this time. And this is relief that we can do pretty immediately and without a tremendous amount of staff uh, working hours to implement um, that relief. And, and so that I think can be taken separately um, in my mind from um, Ms. Tronick's proposal, which I think has merit. Um, I had uh, looked at some other towns that had put together um, some grant funding programs with um, with other neighboring communities and created grants for businesses. So they weren't necessarily loans, didn't have to be paid back, and they were funded through the CARES Act, uh, which has been extended. Um, and so, you know, that's, that's an interesting thing to do as well, but it requires more staff, uh, more, more staffing hours um, and organization to be able to pull that off, uh, particularly if we were planning on doing it alone and, and allocating some of those CARES Act funds toward that effort. Um, that's something that doesn't necessarily have to happen right now. It's something that could happen a few months from now as we, as the, you know, landscape continues to change as more people get vaccinated. Um, and we understand, we have a better understanding of how much um, CARES Act dollars we have left after what we've committed uh, and what we need to use uh, in town internally. Um, so that's one option. Another option is to um, do a hardship waiver, a one-year sort of program, um, as Ms. Tronick proposes, and I think that that certainly is, is worthy of discussion and merit uh, by this board um, and the impacts that that would, um, that would require on terms of town staff. And I think that to do something like that would, would be behoove us, behoove our, um, our business owners, particularly if we put in some requirements um, and some qualifications. So it's not carte blanche, but it is need based. Um, and then they would have to, you know, show that need. Um, so I think we can, we can be surgical and we can also, um, you know, try to address all businesses and not just limit it to um, those businesses that have liquor licenses. So I would support both options. I think it's, it's really important. Uh, one thing I've talked about um, tremendously, not well, tremendously, about awful lot um, is senior tax relief. And, um, you know, we were talking, you, you spoke about abatements, Ms. Tronic, and I think that, you know, we can use that same source to maybe help some of our most needy um, with some senior tax relief um, through our overlay account. 
um, or you know need based need based. It doesn't have to be limited to seniors. Um, for those folks that are experiencing tremendous difficulty with their uh, rents, their mortgages, um, and uh, and our you know we we're seeing folks that have unemployment claims in that have also had fraudulent claims brought ag brought against their name, so they're not getting unemployment, so they have no income whatsoever, and these people are really really suffering, and it's not as rare as one might think it would be. So um, it's there's a lot of folks that are suffering. And we aren't necessarily seeing that. Um, so I think there's lots of options here, but I, I definitely support um, both Mr. Kratman and Ms. Stronic's efforts in this regard. Thank you. So I have a motion by Mr. Kratman, a second by Ms. Wellman for discussion. Mr. Brian Dick, continue the discussion on the motion. Um, yeah, I think it's uh, simple for me. Um, you know, I. I I truly believe this board has been sympathetic. Um, I think where we are right now on February 9th, 2021, after um, a ro robust pandemic season, I think we're exactly where I figured we would be after this topic came up originally back in, I think it was December, early December from Mr. Kratman. Um, I support the 50% and I will support that tonight. <clears throat> I think, um, you know, where we are right now, we, we've taken the time, we've analyzed, we've worked with our town administrators, our town manager to determine what's best, what's the common balance for the what we can do for businesses, what the power that we have and what we can do for businesses as well as residents. So I think the 50% is a good proposition, proposal, motion, what have you. Um, you know, I understand. <clears throat> in addition to that, there, there was there's there's been uh, I'm, I'm a business owner, so I understand kind of the uh, some of the relief that's been granted by the state as well as the federal government. I'm not in the service industry re uh, restaurant bar, which has been hurt the most. I agree, but there's been some businesses that have that have been um, that have actually grown. Um, in, in, in this time. So <clears throat> I'm not in favor of uh, like a, like a hardship waiver or an abatement for individuals at this time. I don't think we have the bandwidth and I don't mean to say that that's an excuse. I just think trying to figure out uh, in addition to what's being offered the, the state level and the grant and the federal level government level, let, let them do what they've set out to do for our residents uh, and for our businesses. So, you know, the first round, there was a lot of PPP money that was granted. Um, my business was able to get some of that money and um, we used it to, to hire and to, to maintain our staff. I know it could always be more, but <clears throat> there was a round two that was recently um, done before the new administration got into president presidency. So, um, there's more qualifications on that, but I believe restaurants and gyms and things like that will be able to leverage that. Um, and then there's surely there's probably going to be a another round three um, of, of money. So I think I personally feel where this board is exactly where we need to be. I don't want to do just because other towns waived 100%, 50%, 30%. We're doing what's right for Turksbury that we feel is what we need to do and, and act on. So I'm, I support the 50%. I was excited to see the grant list that was provided by the town manager to, to businesses. There was a lot of money that was awarded to local businesses um, in the service industry and gyms and things like that. Uh, that's a great start. And that, that's grant money from the state, I believe. So I think with that, the stimulus, the round one, two, and three, um, it's never enough, but I'm I'm in favor for the 50%. I think that hurts the less it hurts us the, the least uh for for businesses and residents. So it's a $44,000 hit in the budget. That's at least what we can do, but it's the right thing for Tuxbury. We're not we're not Wilmington, we're not Reading, we're not um uh, Barica. We're doing what's right for Tuxbury. I appreciate the town manager's work on this and his um hard work on this. And I appreciate the proposal here tonight. So I'm in favor of the 50%. I, I am not in favor of hardship or an abatement uh, relief at this time. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Brian Dick. So you, you stole a lot of my thunder there, uh, Mr. Brian Dick. For me, it's easy. I'm not a businessman. However, I'm a resident, and I f frequent, frequent many establishments in Tewksbury, like we all do, and go in and just you just go go into establishments and you and you know exactly what we're talking about. Um, you know, it's been empty, they've been crushed. So this is um something small. It's never gonna be good enough. You know, we it'll never be good enough. But you know something that's just demonstrating that we, we understand and we're trying to um do what we can, you know, it's a very it's a balancing act. And I guess my only other comment, you know, we're talking about license fees, so I don't think we need to get crazy and try to boil the entire ocean on February ninth. You know, we have in 90 days, we're going to go to town meeting and talk about budgets. And I think this committee, our commitment to the residents is the same. What can we do for taxes, water, and sewer? The three things that punch us in the belly. And that's what we're going to focus on in the next 90 days so we can demonstrate to the residents, hey, you know, we looked here, we looked here, and here's what we're going to do. And I think that's our commitment, or at least my commitment, to the residents because it, 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 it impact, it's impacting everyone across the board. So my only point is we're talking about businesses tonight, specifically license fees, but, you know, we, we still have to always think about 30,000 residents and, and, and do our job for them as well. So it's a balancing act, and um, I'm with you. I have nothing uh, um, nothing more to say. So, with that being said, is anyone else any further discussion on the matter? We have, yeah, a, we have Mr. a second. Mr. Chairman, just just to finish the conversation, um, I, I I want to just first stress I appreciate uh, my colleague Ms. Stronick's opinion on this. Um, absolutely, I agree with everything that she said about how residents are hurting, and all the you know all the places hurting. But you know, one of the, my committee is economic development, and so. That was my charge is to focus on that. Um, you know, I do believe that all the residents are hurting and there's other ways and hopefully, you know, if they need assistance, I want them to reach out to the town and make it known to us that they're having difficulties getting through. We're always open to listening to people um, and have an open ear, especially when people are struggling. This community always rallies together when people are down. I, I've never been proud of what they've done during this COVID. Uh, situation and they will continue to do so. But uh, like I said, we we I talked to my economic development team. We're trying to keep businesses in the community so that they can keep paying taxes and keep the residents tax rate down. And uh, you know we we're doing our best to help them survive so they can help us. They pay a lot of taxes in this community and we want those taxes to continue. I'd, I'd rather take 50% of something than 0% of nothing. 100% you know, of nothing, really, is what it comes down to. Um, so, you know, th that was the whole motion to show that we're in support, that we hear them, and we're going to be here during tough times. So when they're paying all these fees and taxes during good times. Um, so that was the whole purpose. But I do appreciate everyone's opinion. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any further discussion, Mr. Stronach, Ms. Wellman? Oh, Ms. Oh, Ms. Stronach, you get the microphone. The, the I, sorry about that. Um, as I said, I have a very um, open mind about this discussion. And when it first came in front of us with the entertainment, I asked about other fees. I am curious if the Economic Development Committee has talked about other fees besides these two groups um, in terms of looking at fees in general. Uh, we have. Um... But like I said, as part of, uh, I, as I wear many hats, <laughs> so uh, economic development, we've touched on it. We've had meetings during the chamber. We've had some of the grants and loans that were available aren't available to every business. So we've had people from uh, the state giving um, studies and uh, talking about loans and people from economic development from the state level talking with our small businesses how they've been impacted. Um, this was the hottest hit we, we considered. And this is what we thought was a, um, you know, there's a lot of businesses could deliver or bring, um, sell food and do certain things where the alcohol and license, you have to kind of go in the place. You have to be in the business. And some of the places, because the seating was limited to 25%, you, could, you couldn't sit in a booth. You couldn't sit at, nobody could sit in a bar. Nobody could sit it. They, they were the most impacted. Where at least some of the other places, a pizza shop could deliver, or they can, yeah. or, or people could order takeout. Um, yeah. well, and and this is not 
We're not talking about taxes. We're no, talking about a license fee. And we're charging them for a license fee for something that they're not able to use. And that's no, why I, a, I understand that. I'm yeah. just trying to, um, again, I appreciate all the comments, but I'm trying to make a decision um, that I think is right for Tewksbury. I really appreciated Mr. Dick's comments about surrounding communities and what is best for the whole. And I just wanted to understand the entire discussion at the economic development, because you are correct. You are our person on there who is charged and we've asked you to take on that responsibility. So I appreciate that. And I certainly appreciate the efforts put forward. I just want to, um, with we're carving out the this group, I want to know if there are any other groups that are being thought of that we should be considering at the same time, which is why I offered, and I, I get the capacity thing, which is why I said that we had to talk to the town manager, but I just am wanting to make sure that I am, if, because I, I am not opposed to this, but I want to make sure that um, I am making this decision open-mindedly and appropriately knowing all the facts and that, you know, the economic development feel that the entertainment and the alcohol are the two groups. If there are other groups that you're all thinking about, um, as you just suggested with the many hats, I would like to know that as well, because that would play into my decision making as I take this vote, which I think is an important vote. Uh, and and per um, our last meeting, one of the things that I stated um, to the businesses is that, you know, as we were discussing this, that we would like to hear from them and please contact us and write in. And so far, I think everybody's seen the letters and correspondence that we've heard from. It's it, those are the correspondence that we've heard from. We did welcome every business to write into us, from car dealerships to any, any kind of business. We didn't specifically say what type of business. We asked all businesses to please contact us and tell us how COVID has affected you. And we can only, I, I can only act on what I've received. And the, the, those are the correspondence and the things that we've heard. And we've, I've like I said, when we have meetings and discussions, that's the outcry and that's what we're hearing. And that's the need. Okay. So that's, that's what we're focusing on. Thank you. I appreciate that, Mr. Kratman. Thank you, okay. Mr. Chairman. Ms. Wellman, I have nothing further. Okay, thank you. Okay, before we uh, before we take a roll call vote, Ms. Wellman, any further any last discussion on Mr. Kratman's motion? I have none. Okay, perfect. Because this is virtual, we need to take a roll call vote. So we have a motion on the table, Mr. Kratman. Just for the um, for the record, could you please read the motion, please, one one final time, just because we had Absolutely. a little bit of lengthy discussion. Uh, let me bring it up. I have it in front of me. Give me one second. I apologize. I apologize. Uh, I didn't realize that was a motion. I thought it was just a recommendation. Sorry about that. Well, g give me one second. But the uh, the 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 motion is to uh, to uh, have the fees um, waived to fifty percent of uh, for. Uh, hold on a second. Excuse me. Trying to bring up uh, the bar and license fees for uh, all alcohol licenses, which we have 24 of. Um, and um, six uh, wine and malt liquor licenses and uh, four club licenses to 50%. And I'll put that in as a form of a motion. Second. I have a motion. Okay, my second. Okay, roll call vote. Mr. Crabbin, how do you vote? Aye. Ms. Stronick. Aye. Ms. Wellman? Aye. Ms. DeBrandick? Aye. All right, the chair votes aye as well. Um, but Brian, do we, have, do we have another resident, Brian? Uh, we do, Mr. Chairman. Um, you can go whenever you like, President. Okay. We well, I'll, we'll be generous. Okay, is the resident on? Can the resident name and address, please, for the record? John Callahan from TJ Callahan's 1475 Main Street. Okay, the floor is yours. Well, I just, I guess I should have talked earlier, but I just want to say thank you if you just passed that 50%. It's going to be a major help. We took a major, major hit. 
I mean, people think because we got a PPP loan that we had money. A PPP loan that I got was it didn't even cover half like half of the marsh that I even lost. Well, hopefully you could hear by the discussion that we hear you loud and clear. We've been listening, and again, it's it's never like perfect. You know, it is a balancing act, but hopefully you can tell by our vote and our commitment. You know, we're just try we're, we're, we're trying to help in any way we can. So I, I, I appreciate it. And thank you for your comments. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. Very good. And what we'll do, right? Let's let's close down the residence. That way we don't jump around. Um, it, but that's perfect. Um, we're always lenient with residents to call. So let's move to the new uh, next order of businesses. It took for human rights. Ad, advert. Um, advert. Well, my screen just went blank. Um, committee. So, Miss Wellman, you brought this stuff on the agenda um, a few months back, very similar to the licenses fees. What we said is, um, you, I think you work with Mr. Montori on some verbiage on kind of the mission statement to so essentially establish a human rights committee for Tuxbury. So, Miss Wellman, I'll let you have the floor. Maybe do very similar to Crapman, kind of refresh the board, refresh the residents, and. Um, we can have an open discussion, um, again, very similar to what we just did for the license and fees, if that works. That works wonderfully. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Um, yes, so what we have before us this evening is the Tewksbury Human Rights Advisory Committee uh, mission statement, general information, purpose, that sort of thing, that uh, this document has been sent to the board. Um, Mr. Chairman, I don't know if you wanna share it on your screen. I have opened a copy at my desk so that um, during the course of our conversation, if we want to make amendments to the language, um, we can do that. Um, and I can capture that in real time. Um, you know, Mr. Attorney Zarulis, this was something he worked on um, in December and in January. And so this has been, this was vetted by him uh, prior to being brought back to the committee. Um, and I just want to say at the beginning that, um, in, in feedback and conversations I've had with folks, I think, and also following the attendance at the MMA, um, where there was a lot of uh, focus and conversation on um, these issues, that the, I'd like to change the name or entertain the board's interest in changing the name of this committee um, to the uh, Tewksbury Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee. Um, it's a bit more progressive, updated language. Um, and it talks about um, these items, diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, and we're seeing these in all sorts of um, industries and domains. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a bit more modern um, language that I think better suits the intentions of this effort. Um, so, and, and just to give residents at home who may not see this, that the general purpose, I'm gonna read this from the document. Um, the general purpose of the, what I would propose, the Diversity, Equity, and um, Inclusion Committee strives to reaffirm the worth and dignity of every human being. Um, Tewksbury's diversity will be embraced and celebrated through the following activities. To educate, to organize aware, there we go, there it is on the screen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, to organize awareness campaigns, trainings, discussion groups, and other learning opportunities. Um, to advocate by sharing resources with Tewksbury Town employees, committee members, local business owners, faith and nonprofit organizations, educators and residents. Um, to recognize through celebrating Tewksbury groups and individuals that have made a positive impact on diversity and human rights. Um, to respond by facilitating the resolution of human rights conflicts through referral to an appropriate agency. I mean, to celebrate the growing diversity of Tewksbury and the desirability of being a resident or doing business in Tewksbury. Um, we do know that industries are working on their own DEI efforts, um, and seeing that in communities is an important part of, um, or can be an important part of the attraction of locating a business in that community. So, um, without reading the entire document, I'm sure folks have have read through it and have some comments um, and some questions, and potentially want to, um, you know, amend or adjust some language or um, qualifications to it be on the committee, that sort of thing. So I wanted to open it to the board for discussion. And my hope is that um, we can refine this to uh, where we like it to be and then uh, put it on our website and um, solicit feedback and also um, open it to folks that might want to be uh, part of this committee. 
So um, that is my my uh, brief introduction, reintroduction of this topic. Thank you, Ms. Wellman. Very good to frame up, frame up the conversation. So let's, um, Mr. Kratman, how about you bat first? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, thank you for um, first for all the work that everybody's put into this. Um, I, uh, I'm strongly interested in listening to the feedback on this. Um, I think this is something that's very important for our community. Um, unfortunately, with the COVID situation, I, I, I would love to, this is something that I usually would recommend that we have public meetings, have people come in well, much in the w same way we've done with a number of other committees that has come forward and listen to the residents and hear what they think, what they say, and what they need is for this community. Um, I, I know that um, this has been vetted by us a couple of times. Um, it's uh, to the chair to uh, selectman Wellman has the um, have the schools and police department or the uh, their departments that deal with some of these issues have they had contact have you had like any meetings with them to, to have them look at it and any suggestions on the document uh thank you um mr Kratman. yes so my understanding is um the town manager has put this to his colleagues at the school department and also to his department heads um, across all of his boards. And I would refer what they said to, to have the town manager respond to that directly. Um, I think there has been general support um, or very specific support, particularly on the part of the, the police department and the uh, HR department. So I'll let Mr. Montori speak to that. Um, and, but I did wanna to respond to your other point, if you very briefly, um, regarding public meetings and so forth, which I think is valuable. Um, the intention is that once this committee is appointed that they would do a listening tour of the town and that might be virtual certainly at first as we continue to struggle with COVID, but um, that would be part of the mission and uh, of that group initially to go and listen to the community um, to hold those listening sessions and do that as part of their work and then bring it back to the board of selectmen. Um, this is not this is not the board of selectmen saying we want to fix these problems. This is not coming from a place of deficit, but a place of um, of positivity and growth. And so it's it's not a remedy we're trying to put onto the community. It's a way of us engaging the community inclusively. Um, so with that being said, I would um, defer to Mr. Montori as to the response he received from his um his staff um <clears throat> mr chairman the uh, department heads all had an opportunity to review the um, document from the outset um, everybody was supportive uh, of the um, the mission statement as it originally was written and then any changes that were developed and added uh, throughout the process to the final document you have tonight um, there was uh, support from the department heads and forming the committee. Um, so um, it's, you know, it's been well reviewed by them. Uh, the school department, the school superintendent and assistant superintendent uh, did receive the document as well as uh, the school uh, committee uh, chairman. Um, I assume it was passed on to the committee. So it's been provided to um, all of the individuals that the, uh, that Mr. Crabbin had mentioned. Any comments have been incorporated into the uh, into the document. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Montori. Mr. Crabman, anything else on your side? Yeah, uh, thank you for the update on that. I, uh, like I said, it's uh, I, I just uh, you know, like I said, that unfortunately this is where we're at with the the current situation. Uh, but with most every other committee in, that we've formed that I've been involved with, uh, you know, it's like. It's I always like to listen to give everybody the availability of this to are we missing anything? You know, it's like I, I'm, I'm not that I'm not in favor of what we're doing here. I just want to make sure all voices are heard um, and what um, what else could be brought to this? This is, you know, uh, I know we could have meetings on it once it's formed, but, you know, is there a voice on who they believe should be on the committee? Are we missing somebody that should be on the committee? 
or is there or is there something else that should be added to this? Um, so I do like the part of putting it up on the website and hearing that output. Um, I prefer to have some meetings where people could attend. I guess virtually is the only way we really could do it right now. But I, I just want to have, I want to hear everyone from our community. I want to hear the community saying, this is something that we want. Um, not that we are saying that we want it. I want to hear that the community wants uh, this and that, you know, it's community driven and that this is something that will benefit our community. And, that, and that's with every committee that we form. So uh, th that's my point on it, Mr. Chairman. So thank you. Thank you. How about Ms. Tronick? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I really appreciate the name change. Um, so I thank you for bringing that tonight, um, Ms. Wellman. And secondly, it's like you um, stole some of the words right out of my mouth in terms of how I was thinking about this document and um, this committee. I um, understand Mr. Crapman's point of view. However, um, this is a committee that I think um, if there were the need for any changes, that's what it that's what it's all about. Similar to um, other committees that we formed in the infancy, there's a thought process. And I think of this as a seed document um, that you've presented and that the committee's work is to do some of the things that Mr. Crapman talked about in terms of making sure that we've carried everybody's voice into the process um but i do think that this is important and i think thinking about this as how we improve how we learn how we um move forward as a community to make sure that everybody feels that they can represent themselves and be true to who they are and be um thought of not to be looked upon as um, in a negative light. I think that this will, this type of work will serve us well moving forward um, to just bring us to be a stronger community. So the point of this is not a deficit. This is about um, improving how we move forward as a town, I think is really exciting. And I am looking forward to the work. I think the way that the committee has been structured with nine members and then the three town uh, ex officios to help guide the work, to make sure um, the fact that if there's any funding has to go to town meeting um, and just that there's a lot of room for growth within this committee. Um, even just seen by, instead of calling it human rights, talking about diversity and um, equity. Um, I just, I find it refreshing in a way that we can look at ourselves differently. And I look forward to hearing about the work once this committee gets up and running and um, welcome the different voices that I think it'll bring to the table that we may not have heard before to Mr. Crowden's point. That's mm -hmm. all I have, Mr. Chairman. Very good. How about Mr. Brian Dick? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> so this is the second time that this discussion has gone on with the board. Um, I know that it's, it's, it's probably a couple months old now, I think, Ms. to Mrs. Wellman. I think um, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Mrs. Wellman, I, I'd like to, uh, I know this is this is coming from your area. Is there, for, for, for this to come before the board, is there a specific things in the community or is there a specific problem that you felt the need to introduce this as a new committee or is there and maybe not from you but is there feedback that you 
that you're getting like you're, can you give me a little bit more direction on why we need this committee here today uh, and and believe me i know i know other towns are doing it i know um with the name change and all that if you could read and then if you could also say their name again so, so i can write it down um <laughs> But I, I, can, I guess it's it, that question. The first question is really, what would this committee tackle on its first on its, you know, once the committee is um, established, what do you see the first issue in, or first thing that in Tewksbury that this would tackle since it's coming from your department? Um, well, I don't. I, thank you, Mr. Dick. I, um, I don't have a department, um, so <laughs> I, I think I know what you're talking about. Um, I, I think that the, I don't know that the first, there's a particular topic that they're going to identify or, or, or tackle initially, um, with the exception of, uh, listening to what the residents experiences are, um, to your, to your question and, and then maybe forming some decisions. Like, is there an opportunity for us to do more education internally, um, for example, during Pride Month in June, you know, uh, someone told me when we were talking about this that um, Wakefield, that their their friend in Wakefield, who's on their committee, um, they had done a presentation on what the Pride flag, the history of the Pride flag, and what's going on with that um, to give people understanding. Um, you know, it, it would that be a topic that's interesting? Um, we can look at. Um, you know, uh, diversity in the community. There's lots of different kinds of diversity. Um, and how have we changed in Tewksbury? And what are people that are in um, different diverse groups? What are their experiences like when they're coming here? Do they feel as our diversity increases? Do they feel that it is an inclusive community? And if not, why not? And then what could we do to improve upon that? Um, so, for you know, there are examples that individuals have. Um, this committee has received letters from um, families in town that have adopted children that are um, minority communities. Um, you've seen those letters. We've received letters from educators. Um, so this this board has received correspondence from from residents in response to this effort. Um, so you know. I, and I, I'm sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot. I think those are good things. And those are some of the things I wanted to hear and understand if it's, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of areas that this committee can address. Um, mm -hmm. you, you naming some of those with that information, I guess, with that information, how would, how would you see that information kind of playing out? And, and I know that the, the current name has advisory in it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I don't know if it's in the new name, but I, I, I envision this as an advisory where the, maybe the committee would come before the board yep. and state the, state the, um, the item, the issue, the problem, the discussion, and then a solution, or maybe you need some funds or, you know, that type of thing. Um, I, I, I kind of, I'm trying to vision how this committee would work mm -hmm. and then if there was some type of action that maybe went in front of the town per se like town meeting would that warrant come from the board of selectmen that item um okay those are all great questions and one thing i didn't answer for you was um that the name change would be diversity equity and inclusion committee diversity okay. being all the different ways that people are different and then you know inclusivity being um how we how we welcome how we show our belonging for those you can be a diverse community and not very inclusive. Um, so it's important to look at those things. Um, so, so to your point, uh, just you, this committee, um, would still be sort of an advisory committee. Um, it's not a commission. It's not a, a it, it's not going out and looking at, um, coming with preconceived notions or with preconceived problems that it's looking to solve. This document does not include that. Um, this document invites um, some ex officio members um, and invites um, if you look at the if you look at the criteria for membership, we invite a school committee member or a designee to be on the board, but um, the schools may choose to go in their own direction. Uh, they are starting to do some of that work now. Um, 
and I think they're calling it diversity, equity, and belonging. Um, I don't know a lot about that particular effort. I've only seen some stuff on that recently. So they may want to go in their own direction, and that's that's their purview. Um, this committee would be working to solve things through conversation, open discussion, listening, um, those areas. But if if they needed funding, that would have to be approved. In the way that this language is set out, that would be approved by town meeting, and that might be for things like educational program speakers, etc. Um, if there was something that needed to come before town meeting in terms of a warrant article, um, it could either be something that's brought forward by the board or it could be brought forward by the committee. Um, just like the um, beautification committee is a subcommittee of the school of the <laughs> of the board of selectmen, um, they also bring their own items before. Um, the town that's not sponsored by the board. An example of that would have been the um, the plastic bag ban, for instance. Um, in that particular instance, it was not brought forward by the selectmen, but by that committee. So um, that's something that if you want to um, amend that in in this document, that can be done, um, and it can be part of a forward conversation. You know, it doesn't have to be one or the other. And I don't think yeah. that we need to limit it at that point. <clears throat> Yeah, I don't think you want to limit it um, because I do. I do think that this can make a stronger community. There's, there's uh, when you talk about getting different people involved, different voices, um, it can make Tewksbury an even better place than it is. So it, I don't see how this thing, how this committee, um, can't make the community stronger. So, with that said, I, I, I kind of like. The current name um, as an advisory committee, um, I'm, I'm, you know, on the name change, I'm still trying to gra grab that. That's it's not a, a big change to me, but it's you know just trying to let sit and and kind of think about that. How that um, you know I'm not against the name change, but I'm wondering. There was obviously a reason why there was a name change. It took the advisory out and things like that. So. Oh, we can put advisory back in. That's completely fine. If if I think the the, fo the thing I'm focused more on is the, the terms diversity, equity, inclusion. If you want to make that diversity, equity, inclusion advisory committee, I'm completely open to that. I'm, I think that would be just tremendous. Yeah, I think the the human rights thing doesn't doesn't flow well with me. So I kind of like how you've uh, kind of encapsulated that. If we move forward with approving this committee. Um, so, with that said, I'll I'll uh, I'll lend, I'll go back with the chair. I didn't mean to say department, Jane. Uh, this is woman. I I meant to say. Uh, I guess I could have said your heart and um, just your constituents have, have uh, developed this um, committee, and that's you brought it forward. And I appreciate you bringing it forward to the selectmen for this discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very good. Okay, I'll add some additional comments here, and then we'll just kick it back to the board. So. I always say great minds think alike. You know, the name is, um, for me, it's very fancy. As a matter of fact, what I came up with was the um, the Tewksbury Common Ground Committee. Tewksbury, Tewksbury's Common Ground Committee, and I'm sometimes a definition guy. So <laughs> get a little static there. So Common Ground, it's I call it opinions and interests shared by each of two or more parties. And then I always go back to what we're here for as a Tewksbury residents. And I just put it in Tewksbury residents from different cultural backgrounds form common ground, found common ground. For me, it's that simple, just short and sweet. So I'm not going to get caught up with the name change, but I thought to the point, human, you know, the, the, the name was a little bit heavy for me. Um, and if I go, so there is some stuff I'd feel like. Uh, Miss Wellman, that we should really look at hard. What I mean by that is, if I look at four, five, and seven, four, five, and seven here, and can you see that? Am I still sharing the screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So I'm not going to read them out, but if you really take a, a deep dive on four, five, and seven, for me, it's like very strong language. It's almost like this committee. Um, how should I say it? Would have like some authority to be like the police or FBI, um, you know, to can think about it. Consult and mediate with parties involved. Provide a safe place where individuals or groups can discuss their concerns and complaints. And the last one is I skip six and seven is uh, assist the planning, assist in planning responses to groups, internal. <laughs> 
at, adverse to the uh, core values. You'll get a lot of static there. Um, I don't know, I can't see who, who it is from. The point being is, like I said, a very strong language. And I think of open meeting laws. Um, for me, it sounds pretty risky if we have a meeting and folks come in, our residents come in, and stop making, I don't know, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is we just gotta be very careful that we just don't use this as a forum you know, to come in and identify residents' names or stuff. I think it's very uh, risky with open meeting laws. And I guess the point, the, the, the whole point is um, just want to be careful. I think the language is strong, and I think that's well if you take those out because um, I, I said my piece. I think it's very, it's allowing this committee to kind of do something over the top, which I just want to be careful for. So, um, and I think I have just a few other comments. Um, matter of fact, at C here, this one, this one for me is scary, just like the name. The the committee shall shall be political, politically nonpartisan. As soon as I say see that, I'm like, it, you know, it draws politics in. And for this committee to be successful, it absolutely unequivocally has to be nonpartisan. And we hear that word every day when we turn on the TV, and it drives folks nuts. You know, nowadays, there's so much hate out there. If you like red, I like green, bah, I don't want to talk to you anymore. You know what I mean? And I use that baby analogy because it's true. So I like to remove that stuff for this democracy equals multiple viewpoints. And for me, for me this is um, when I first read it, I, I like to quote the Godfather line. They say it's business, it's not personal, which is the furthest thing from the truth. So, um, again, I think that it's very strong words. And my point is, I think there's a little bit of risk here if we could keep those words in there um, and, and, and we actually – you know, we execute on some of these words. I just, I think they can be taken out and just watered down, I guess. That's my analogy. That's all. Mr. And Chairman. last, oh, okay, Mr. Stark, I'm just going to continue. I'm, I'm almost done here. Um, and the last point is, I kind of mentioned, my only fear would be is that if the action's taken by this committee and it's not, we take the politics out. We we could talk about very sensitive matters that actually could maybe divide folks. And I know that's not the mission at all of this committee, but there's a little bit of risk there. So my only point here is if that ever happened, I'd want something in this, you know, just like all committees, subcommittees that bubble up to the board to put some 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 verbiage in there that said, God forbid, again, I, don't, I know this committee would not want to do it, but if they we happen to sway from our residents, a mutual understanding for residents, residents at the board could take action. You know, I don't know what those actions are, but I just, I just want to be sensitive to make sure we're trying to look left, look right, and, and really just have the committee focus on what's very important, um, which was a lot of things called out. So last but not least, I think I said, I think, um, I think I covered everything and I just don't want to repeat what the, the, the board said. So I don't know if that makes sense. I know it, I went very quick, Ms. Wellman, um, but I don't know if you have any thoughts or feelings or you understand what kind of process what I, uh, what I said. Um, I think I understood uh, some of what you were getting at, um, starting with section C, um, that the committee shall be politically nonpartisan and may work with like committees of other municipalities and with organizations with which it shares a common purpose and may use of any available materials, advice, or assistance from other municipalities and organizations that may be helpful in accomplishing its mission. Um, I think that by saying it is politically nonpartisan, um, it, it, the intention is stated up front that politics should not be part of the work that's being done here. So there may be a political platform that's happening and there are other committees in town that work on policy um, at the, you know, the local state and national level, um, you know, your, your town Republican company, your, your group, your town Democrat group, um, that this group is intended not to be partisan. Um, and that's why it's in here is to kind of memorialize that intention so that down the road, when they, if, if it becomes a political conversation that the, it's brought back to this is not supposed to be political this is not supposed to be one party with another this is the intention here is that we're working on issues that revolve around diversity equity and inclusion and keeping it kind of steering it in that direction and giving the board members you know the tools to say this we're trying not to be political here we're trying to focus on these other matters so that's why that's that's in there. I'm not sure if taking that out 
would sort of invite po politics to come in. Do you see what I mean? I do, I do, and that's why I say just multiple viewpoints um, because I, I have gotten feedback like, you know, I have gotten feedback. We've done a lot of homework across the communities, uh, different yeah. communities as well. And last but not least, do and what I'll do, Miss Wellman, and just for the board, is I'll kind of send my maybe recommendations in. You know, just you know, some of my recommendations in what I think we should keep or not keep or modify. And last but not least, that that last sentence. I think I'm sharing it. Uh, again, this one kind of just scares me a little bit in the fact that among its agendas items um, shall be a review of human rights related incidents in the town since the since the last meeting regardless of whether or not the committee was involved in responding to the incident so again it's it's inviting okay there was a particular incident you know and then it comes even if the committee doesn't know about the incident it comes back to the committee and again i see a little danger there as well and again i think of open meeting laws um and and not mentioning names or residents, you know what I mean? That could get very ugly quick. So I, I don't know why. Yep, that's all. So again, I'll, well, I'll, I'll think, do some edits. Yep. Yeah, I would appreciate that. I think that to speak to that point specifically, um, there are issues that come up in a community from time to time. Um, people post about them on their Facebook pages. People talk about them at less now, soccer games or whatever. And so there are things that do come up. Um, they can be discussed in a way that honors the privacy of the individuals, if somebody were to approach a member of the committee and say, you know, we, I need to talk about this, or I need a way to work on this, that can be, you know, this is a matter that's come up and, you know, this is how it's going to be handled um, with, you know, framework and guidelines to do that um, in a respectful, confidential way, um, recognizing that these are open meetings and they are required. And that's why some of the, um, you know, having the town managers designee on that, um, and in the other members, the criteria of that board makeup is is part of um, that framework that ensures the success around that. But I certainly welcome your edits and all of the committee's edits. Absolutely. And I'll make some more points about open meeting laws. I think for this committee to be successful, you just mentioned Facebook and you have all of the social media platforms and you know how um, we just we got to be so careful that we stick to the open meeting laws with this committee, um, and I think we have to specify that uh, in in um, you know in this document. So that's Sir, all I had, Ms. Stronick. I'll, Ms. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll pass. Thank you, Ms. Stronick. So um, I'm sorry that I uh, was so um, anxious to um, to interrupt your opinions, but you really kind of captured a lot of things that I had not thought of, Mr. Chairman, and I certainly, um, to Mr. Dick's point, I do think that this committee is something that can make us stronger, but when we change the title from the human rights to the diversity, equity, and inclusion, which advisory, um, I think that that changes some of the uh, missions as it relates to, um, and C certainly stands out in terms of um, the updated language that could be in there um, so that it reflects the new title as well. And I agree with you uh, rereading four, five, and six because of the way that you uh, presented that. I was thinking about those in different terms, um, but I think that you make a very strong case for removing them because I think that if you are looking at one, two, and three uh, about um, the promotion of the diversity and inclusion within Tewksbury, those things can kind of rise to the top um, as issues. And again, if we're looking at this from less than a deficit mindset in a proactive approach, then I don't think that we need to be looking and seeking conflicts rather than finding ways to be more inclusive because to Ms. Wellman's point, you can be diverse and not inclusive at the same time, which is um, very dangerous. So I really want to thank you for that. Um, and I also um, worry about the uh, legislative issues. And I mentioned that last time in um, I, as you were talking, I reminded 
in my own head about those um, issues. So I really want to thank you for that. And um, we, uh, so with that, uh, is it something that you're looking for us to come back now that you've made some uh, changes in the way that we're looking at this with the change in the title? Um, yeah, so I think that, um, yes, I, what I'm, what I'm kind of, what I'd like to do is, um, see how folks feel with the name change. Uh, so just to repeat that it would be diversity, equity, and inclusion advisory committee. And then, um, for us to put a draft document online so that we can solicit some feedback. Um, I know there's a lot of interest in, um, for folks that want to be part of this committee. Um, and I, I know that um, it's something that we had talked about. I want to say 6 months ago, we, this was originally brought forward. And so we've done some refinement and everybody's dealing with all the different things that we're working on at the same time. So, um, I don't really want to let it sit too much longer, recognizing the fact that um, the board has some edits. And so. I think if we put it up as a draft, it's very clear that it's a draft. Um, and then, uh, in the same time, you know, the, we can discuss, we can bring it back with some edits. Um, I think that there is, you know, it's good for us to talk about diversity and inclusion and so forth, but we, we need to have, um, a tool to how we want to discuss when, when we see discrimination, how do we want to address it? And there is MCAD. And so that process already exists. Um, this would, you know, in some ways be sort of a local, um, place where somebody could stop and ask questions before they go to that, that level, um, and maybe be able for us to turn things around here in our community when those things are encountered. Um, but I'm, I'm very open to what the board wants to do, um, what the board is comfortable with, um, so that we can move forward. Um, and bring this to the community so that we can do that listening and that committee can start that work. Um, it's going to take time. I think it'll take a year for those listening sessions to go to go around. Um, so there's no, there's no, um, you know, it, it, we need to take our time to do it correctly, but I do think we need to, to be able to engage the public um, at this point. Okay, thank you, Ms. Wellman. Thank you, Mr. Onik. Um, any other discussion before we before I ask for the what's well, the pleasure of the board how to move forward? I I'd like to just make an, one more comment, Mr. Chairman. Um, so just a couple of my thoughts. Just want to get out there. So I I like the diversity, equity, inclusion advisory committee. I like what Ms. Wellman has proposed. I like the advisory in there. Um, so I do like that. I do, I am concerned about moving forward without seeing a final document. And I think, I think that, I think it's moving forward as well. And I think it's moving forward, but for the board to be able to see uh, some of the thoughts that some of the, some of the, the great viewpoints that our chairman brought up, I, I, I do understand what he yep. is saying and also Miss Miss uh, Miss Stronic. So, I don't want to rush such an important item, such an important committee. So I, I would like to um, filter back the edits, the title edits through the document, whether it changes the flow a little bit, which I think it will, right? We, I think we mm -hmm. agree on that. And then, um, so make the title edits and then make some changes. And I'm sure there's some recommend, it sounds like there's some recommendations from our chairman, Mrs. Stronick, and maybe Mr. Crabb and myself. So, I, I would like to kind of maybe table it and 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 um, with the thought of moving forward, but um, allowing the board to take one more pass at it. That's just a thought of mine. So I didn't, sure. I didn't, it's not a motion, but that's just a thought. Well, how about we bring it back for a date certain? And then folks have, you know, a week to get in their thoughts and then we incorporate that into a document and include it in a, in a packet either for the 23rd or the first meeting in March. So I like that moves I, it forward, and it's still, and then we can have that discussion. Yeah, I'm sorry, okay. Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, just jumping in, finishing uh, answering Ms. Wellman. I I agree with that. I think putting a date on it 
because there was an update on the last time. And I think there was some edits that I had to give you that I didn't. So um, I like kind of tabling it, putting a date on it, whether it's the next meeting or whatever, gives us a little bit more breathing room with some of the concerns that were brought up by the board. But I do think there's, there is some momentum and um, I'll, I'll go back, to, I'll um, lean back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brian. Well, Mr. Chairman, can I just make one last comment as well? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank yep. you. Yep. Um, Please. Well, I, I listened to every, I, everyone made some really wonderful remarks on this thing. Um, and I still have a little bit of concern about the makeup of the committee. And that was the whole point. It's not what the committee is or how they the committee. I don't want to leave anybody out. And when we are making, it says in the document how the committee, sh how the membership should be formed. Um, I haven't heard from the residents of what they believed. Who's like, is there some, I mean, it says we should have somebody from the selectmen, somebody from the school committee, somebody from the police. Is there somebody that's being left out or on there that I haven't heard from? And th that's what I want to hear from the public. So putting it on our website and get letting the residents vet on it and give us their input. If they believe we're missing a group or adding something to that, that's, I, I think that's very important. And, uh, and I agree with some of the points on the, uh, the language on there, you know, I was a little concerned with, you know, uh, providing a safe uh, location for things. It's like, well, how do we, uh, I, I understand the thought process behind it, but it's like, you know, if there is, uh, you know, if there's a group and we're having a meeting, how do, how does the town ensure that this is a safe, uh, you know, location and uh, that people's agenda, everybody's viewpoints could be heard. It's, you know, it's just, there's, there's some language and some thoughts that I think we should just look into. Uh, you know, I'd like to have the residents speak to it and then uh, and then make sure that our general counsel, once again, gives it the okay of, you know, we're not liable for something if something was to happen of, you know, our document says that we're providing a safe location. How are we doing so? How are we providing that? And just just a, just a couple of concerns. I mean, I'm sure we will. I'm not concerned about that, but I just want to make sure that we're not putting ourselves liable for any suits or anything as well. Very good. Seems like we're right. seems like we're very close. Um, I think next meeting is doable. It's, what's the next meeting? Um, February 23rd. But, but anyhow, 23rd. what's the pleasure of the board? The 23rd. Okay, cool. I think we're close. So what's um, what's the pleasure of the board? Uh, so I'm going to make a motion that uh, we bring this item back uh, on the 23rd with comments from the committee uh, to myself and Mr. Montori um, one week from today, whatever that works out to be. Is that the 16th? Okay, so no. prior to yeah. so we prior to uh, go to Mr. Onik. I'm sorry. Uh, could I just make a friendly amendment to that? And if we could do it um, to that Friday, just next week is um, school vacation week. And I'm not sure what I know that um, I'm not, I probably, I'm worried about not being able to get it to you on Tuesday. Um, sure. But I would like till the end of the week so that we have it ready for our packet when um, it goes out on Friday. So, you don't ask me for a date. You I'm looking at a calendar. I'm looking at a calendar. So, our next meeting is the 23rd on Tuesday. So, if I could have edits um, by uh, the morning of the 19th, so they could be, but earlier is better. Yep. Four edits is hard to do. I can do it, I can totally do it. But um, earlier is better, and then we can incorporate those edits in a red line document so everybody can see how the changes are impacted. You see what comes out, what goes in, each person's color, and then I'll present that back to you um, in the packet. And then my process at that point would be, you know, whatever the pleasure of the board is. But um, once we agree on that language, um, then to post it um, and to uh, solicit comments from from the public as we um, go forward and you know open it up um, to people to apply. We'll still do our normal um, interview process like we typically do for boards. 
Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry, I do have another question. Uh, uh, you're good, go ahead. Ms. Wellman, when you say that we're gonna post it, we're still gonna post it as a draft asking for it. Is that what you're, you had mentioned that earlier, is that still the intent? I wouldn't post it as a draft um, uh, until okay. we've refined the language. I think it would be better if we refine the language than to bring it forward. I think it's better if we can go forward and say, you know, we can post it. I'm fine with posting it as a draft if you want to, but um, if we take out or significantly refine, you know, sec sections four, five, and six, and so forth, um, you know, then we're spending a lot of time explaining that. And it, you know, Mr. Kratman may feel differently, and I'm open to that. But I'm, I just want to make sure that I'm understanding what I'm voting on. So I know you had mentioned that earlier. I just want to try and understand. That's all. That's fine with me. All if right. that's the motion, yes. I'll second it. Okay, we just had a lengthy discussion. So, Ms. Wellman, one more time. How about a nice quick summary for the motion on the table, and then then we'll go from there. So, what's the motion to to have the, the end end by February February nineteenth? Correct. Yes, sir. Of, just the on morning the board, of February nineteenth. Yep. Okay. And to come back before the board on the twenty third. Very good. Okay. Cool. Mr. Stronach, did you second that motion? Yes, I did. All right. Very good. Roll call vote. Uh, ro ro roll call vote, Mr. Crabman. How do you vote? Um, I would, I would just discussion on this. I, I, I would, uh, like to see that the public, like I said, I still have concerns. Um, that, you know, that we're, we're voting on something that how the committee is made up and we're not allowing the public. If it's not posted on the site, how is the public going to give us their input? If we're not posting it prior to us voting on it, I'm not comfortable with that. If it was posted. And for a draft, and residents could do it, and then we could vote on our next meeting. My vote, my vote would be yes. But the fact that we're not posting it and giving the residents an opportunity to give us something, I'm not comfortable with that. So what's so what's your solution? What's your you have any? I, I believe we should, I think the the draft should go up on our website tomorrow if we're voting on it, and let the community talk to us about the, all the the need and how they think this community should be formed. I want the president's input, and, and that's Mr. Montori, I got you, I got you, I got you. Mr. Montori, would that be possible before we amend or not amend the motion? Um, what you could do, Mr. Chairman, is um, you could go along with Ms. Wellman's motion um, and at the same time take the draft as it's currently presented to the board tonight without any changes, put it on the website, and ask the public to provide any comments by the same date as the board. Okay, how how would you, that would uh, I mean would that just be a simple click on the uh, to our website okay. for residents okay. just to do it at uh, not MC just to make edits yeah, as well? We, or we, be, I, we can work on something tomorrow that they either do it through the uh, general email that the town has, uh, or um, they can send Janine the comments uh, directly. Okay. If that's something the board wants to do, Mr. Chairman, yeah. Mr. Chairman, Please, Mr. Brindex. So we're in the discussion mode for Mr. Crapman, correct? Yes. Yes. So I feel very confident in Ms. Wellman's proposal on the on the group of individuals <clears throat> selected the, for this committee. So I would not be in favor of posting it to the website and um, tomorrow in a rush job. I think. The motion that Ms. Wellman presented and the second by Mrs. Stronach, we should move forward with that and take a vote. Okay, very good. So let's again roll call vote. We have a motion. We have a second. Um, so let's just vote on that and, and, and see if we want to adopt or not adopt Mr. Crapman's potential motion. So we, uh, roll call vote. Mr. Crapman, how do you vote in favor of Ms. Wellman and Mrs. Stronach's motion? Uh, as, as is, I vote no. Okay, um, Ms. Stronach, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Wellman? Yes. Mr. Ryan Dick? Yes. And the chair votes aye as well, so it passes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Mr. Montori, the floor is yours. I think we have just a few items. We have the snow operations report, and then we have some invoices um, just to review. So um, the floor is yours, Mr. Montori. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just briefly, I just wanted to give the board and the residents an update on the um, nor'easter that we recently had um, that went uh, from Monday into Tuesday um, last week. 
Um, as all of us know, uh, the town had 19 inches of snow in a 14 hour period, um, which was uh, higher than most communities uh, in the area had. Uh, going into the storm, we were originally forecasted to receive 8 to 14 inches, uh, but we um, we ended up uh, as the as our weather uh, forecaster told us we overperformed. Um, we had a good response from our DPW. Um, the entire staff um, came in for the storm. Um, we had uh, that allowed us to have 24 DPW vehicles uh, that worked 32 and a half hours uh, to uh, to uh, battle the storm. Uh, in addition, we had 41 contractors uh, that punched into work at 5 p.m. on Monday. Uh, they uh, stayed for varying hours, but most uh, stayed uh, for an average of 19 hours um, during the storm. Um, during the storm, we, uh, as we normally do when we call in the contractors, we call in uh, a town employee uh, from another department who comes in and handles dispatch for us. Um, the dispatcher handles all of the phone calls uh, and uh, reviews any of the messages that come through uh, uh, from residents. Uh, I believe this storm we had approximately 50 complaints during the duration of the storm when normally a, an average storm we would have 10. Um, we actually reviewed the phone system over the past week and we made some improvements to it and we're going to continue to make improvements to uh, our dispatch operations. Um, you know, in addition to this being um, probably the uh, uh, worst storm we've seen in, uh, since 2015 uh, and the amount of uh, accumulation of snow we had in a short period of time, uh, we have a lot of new contractors working for us this year. And um, that caused us to have some streets that were missed, uh, generated more complaints than normal for uh, uh, because of the storm size. Um, this, the contractors that we have working for us this year, unlike in past years, um, we have smaller equipment um, than we've had in the past, which uh, made pushing this snow, heavy snow accumulation more difficult. Um, and just to give an indication, we started to see a decrease in our contractors. Um, we used to have upwards of 60 contractors. Um, and then in 2017, we started to see a decline. And then this year, um, we have 47 contractors mostly uh, smaller vehicles, which uh, again, in a large storm like this makes it difficult to push the uh, push the snow and clear the streets as, as fast as we would like. Uh, we did have road supervisors uh, out uh, during the storm as we normally do, but again, because of the type of storm and the amount of accumulation in a short period of time, uh, they mostly plowed and didn't have the opportunity as they normally would to uh, check areas and check routes. Uh, we also will be addressing this in the future by bringing in additional uh, employees um, separate from uh, the staff to plows to uh, assist with um, um, super, uh, spotting areas just to make sure we catch uh, all of our routes and all of our areas as we should. Um, we had an act after action meeting uh, once the storm ended, uh, reviewed all of the, the issues that we had. Um, we um, worked to address those issues. Uh, make improvements that we'll continue to make. Um, and I think um, this past weekend, even though it was a much, uh, um, a much smaller storm, I think it did a good job on uh, Sunday. Um, and uh, I think overall for the type of storm we had last week, I think the DPW staff did, a, a, did an excellent job. Uh, I know we had more complaints than normal, but um, you know, 32 and a half hours of work um, 19 and a half inches of snow. I think they uh, did accept an exceptional job. Um, and again, uh, it wasn't perfect, but uh, we know where we had problems and uh, we'll improve upon that. Um, and that's really it. I just probably want to end by just saying, you know, the town has 160 miles of roadway, uh, which uh, translates into 320 mile uh, lane miles. Uh, we have 598 accepted roads in our community. And we have approximately 300 cul-de-sacs and dead ends, which makes plowing difficult. And even with those difficulties, I think the DPW does a good job. So, again, a unique storm. Haven't seen one like this since probably 2015. Um, and um, I think they did a good, good job during it and cleaning it up. So, uh, that's just an update on the storm. Okay. 
Um, just uh, questions. I have a few, but I'll I'll, I'll wait. Uh, questions from any of the board members? Comments? Mr. Chairman? Please, Mr. Honig, please. I'd just like to say that I put the um, yardstick in. I keep the snow cone. I got 22 inches where I on my little cul-de-sac and I do want to thank the DPW workers. They really have um, done a tremendous effort and um, then they got whacked again over the weekend and then they got whacked again today. So I appreciate the town manager's comments and um, I know that it's always hard when it snows um, to do everything that we can for the town, but from my little perspective i think we got another three inches and i think that overall they did a very good job considering the challenges that we had so thank you mr montori and please thank the dpw staff for me anyway very good well, Russ, any anyone else on the board uh mr chairman if i could say a couple of things uh, uh thank you thank you uh mr montori for giving us the update um I did, I'm sure, as everybody received some sort of calls or for concerns or things in it. I, and I, I do want to thank uh, DPW staff. I know everybody worked really hard. It's not easy dealing with these storms. Mother Nature can really wallop you. And, uh, you know, everybody's working straight through the nights. Uh, I think there's always room for improvements. And I have had discussions with the town manager about some of the recommendations that I think we could put in place. Uh, specifically, uh, communication. Uh, when people are calling uh, and they're telling people, showing their concerns of what's happening, especially during COVID and we have medical conditions and people need to get out and is worried about, um, you know, getting uh, emergency vehicles to certain residents. If somebody's calling and they have concerns, um, I believe that we could do a better way of communicating with residents and specifically talking with them that make sure that um, their concern was remedied. I know we get calls and we send crews out to handle it, but um, without talking with somebody, is the concern actually remedied or is there something that we're missing? And so, uh, you know, I've told everybody that has had a concern to contact the town manager's office or send an email specifically so we know uh, if you have pictures, if you have concerns, we can always do better. Uh, we're always working harder to do better. And if we need to, you know, put more equipment on specific areas, then we need to do that. Um, but, uh, you know, like I said, everyone worked as hard as they could. Uh, we did get a big storm, but, uh, you know, when those things happen, we find the problems and there's a way to solve them. And uh, I think working together, we can solve them. And, uh, you know, this, we'd like to hear the residents' recommendations or issues that they've had and find a way that we can make sure everyone's happy with uh, the services being provided by us. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Any other board members? Yeah, Mr. Kelly, Mr. Chairman. Please, please. Uh, just really briefly, I want to uh, thank the manager for being on top of this. He gives us updates um, during, you know, to kind of up, tell us how it went with the storms in between meetings. It's important for us to get that. Um, my question through you, Mr. Chairman, to the manager is, uh, what's the most efficacious way for someone to, um, to have something addressed with the board? Because communication um, is, is certainly a priority. I know that we have um, a form-based feedback uh, on the website the DPW website, so people can put in uh, report an issue that way, um, and then they can also call in to the DPW. Um, there's a phone number that folks can call and leave a message, or somebody answers it. And so, um, wh what is the uh, what is staff's opinion on the best way to make that communication when um, they're in the moment and they can't get out of their driveway, and it's been a long time. I, I live on Shawshine Street, and so. Um, the trade-off for living on a busy street is I always have my street plowed and it's, it's you know, it's really well done. Um, I have to hear it all night long, but I, I have no complaints in the wintertime. Um, so I don't, I don't live the experience necessarily if somebody lives at the end of a cul-de-sac. 
um, but my neighbors do. Um, so what's what's the best way? What let's give the residents a tool that's um, the best way for them to reach out with when what that expectation is. I know folks tend to call and they they do tend to come pretty quickly and address it uh, for some of those folks, but not always. So you know what's what's the manager's uh, recommendation? And I still think during the during the event, uh, calling the DPW is the best way. Um, there is a uh, dispatcher there especially, uh, when, when we are um, uh, calling in our contractors, which means it's a it's a larger than normal event. Uh, so mm -hmm. calling the DPW, um, someone will respond. Uh, we talked about to Mr. Crappen's point that um, if you leave a message, um, we're going to um, make sure we get back to people and uh, let them know we got their message and we'll, we will be addressing the concern and get more information. If by chance uh, it's really an emergency, like everything else, you can call our emergency dispatch, who will also relay calls over to us uh, for any emergencies. Um, so I think calling would be the first. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's not an emergency and not something that uh, needs to be done right away, and you just want to let us know about it, um, you can email uh, through the website. The DPW does have a, uh, a system that you can go on specifically to talk about to to mention. Um, uh, issues regarding uh, snow plowing um, and that email will go uh, get to us too. Uh, but I really think during the event, I would uh, make the call. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. All right. Um, Mr. Brandick, are you, are you good? I'm, I'm good. That was the uh, unmuted or muted thumbs up. I'm good. I thought they did right, a great job. Good. I thought they did a great job and I didn't get any complaints. So that's all I have to add. So keep up the good work. Thank you. All right, very good. All right, Mr. Monterey, th again, thanks for bringing it on the agenda. I think it was important for the residents to understand that we did get walloped, um, you know, and there were a, a few misses, and, and we did receive a, uh, numerous calls, you know, to come back and, and, and you know, clean up areas here and there. So um, the sad news is every time I – it looks like we're – I think we're in for it. Every time I put on the news, you know, it looks like we got another storm coming and another storm. So here we go. Here we go again. But it's New England. You know, it's par for the course. So um, – so I think enough said there. So that brings us, Mr. Martori, to town council invoices. Uh, I just have one invoice from uh, uh, town council, Kevin Fairley, for um, the time period of January 1st, 2021 through January 15th, and the amount of $3,357.50, and I would recommend the approval. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion in a, a second. How do you vote, Mr. Crapman? Sorry. Ms. Tronic. Sorry, I'm having trouble unmuting. Aye. Ms. Wellman? Aye. Mr. Brian Dick? Aye. The chair votes aye as well. Uh, actually, Mr. Montreal, one more thing. Can we just give a quick update on, on I, we, we're getting a lot of calls, and rightfully so. Someone's, could someone mute? I just get a lot of. A lot of racket. Perfect, thank you. Um, Mr. Montori, before you close, can you just give an update on, on just the COVID? I know we have all the information on our town site, but maybe just a 30-second update of where we stand as far as the vaccinations coming in, the vaccine coming in, and then secondly, how folks or residents have to register and where our potential areas will be designated um, when we finally do get some 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 vaccines. Sure, sure. Um, and I'm, I'm glad you brought this up, Mr. Chairman. Um, first of all, I think it's important to note that the community over the last few weeks has um, moved in a positive direction regarding its um, actual cases, um, its positive cases and its uh, positivity rate. Um, we uh, moved from a red community to a um, uh, to a yellow community, which means we are a uh, moderate risk, uh, which was good news. Uh, yesterday, uh, the governor um, lifted the restriction, the 25% res cap capacity restriction uh, for businesses um, and returned it to 40%. Um, he also uh, uh, now um, allows restaurants to have 40% of their uh, seated capacity um, uh, instead of the 25%. Um, and, uh, but he continues to have uh, gatherings at 10 for indoors, 25 for outdoors. Uh, so uh, we've been moving in, in a positive direction uh, in that uh, sense. In regards to vaccinations, 
Uh, there still has been a uh, slower than anticipated rollout, um, but obviously it's a big undertaking uh, uh, within the Commonwealth. Uh, cities and towns uh, are gonna be limited to 100 doses per their community uh, for, uh, for community clinics. Uh, we have uh, developed a plan uh, to hold um, a clinic um, utilizing our town nurse and other nurses that we uh, have uh, available uh, to have a clinic to provide vaccinations at our senior center. Um, we were told today that we will be receiving 40 initial doses of the vaccine. We have not uh, received them yet, and we don't know when we will when we will receive them. It could be any day now. Um, once uh, we get past the initial um, amount allotted to us, um, we anticipate receiving 100 doses per week uh, for residents. And the way residents will be able to um, register will be through the state's website. Um, they'll go on the website and um, register uh, in uh, Tewksbury, and uh, only residents will be allowed to um, receive vaccinations uh, at the uh, senior center. Uh, for those residents who do not have the ability to get online and use the website, they can use the state uh, call-in number um, to do that. Um, in addition to the um, local um, clinic that we will be uh, having once we receive our allotment of vaccine, uh, Lowell General will be starting their vaccine distribution uh, at their uh, site on, uh, um, I think it's 1,000, at the address 1001 Pawtucket, Pawtucket Boulevard East in Lowell um, at, the, uh, at the Cross River Center. Um, they will be opening up that uh, center to Tewksbury residents. Uh, so residents of Tewksbury can start um, regi registering for the vaccine there at lowellgeneral.org backslash COVID vaccine. Um, that can be started immediately. So that was good news. So not only once we get our clinic up and running, there'll be an alternative for residents to go to Lowell General site uh, in the city of Lowell. And that's it. Awesome, good stuff. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Montori. <clears throat> All right, just bouncing back to the agenda. I don't think we have any meeting minutes. Um, that brings us the board member reports. How about Mr. Crapman? What do you got? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Wall Regional Transit Board. I met with them uh, last Thursday. We went through, uh, you know, the COVID situation and how things are running and how the bus routes are working. They're working at the best they can to provide service right now. They're hoping to be providing additional service um, as the numbers allow and the revenue allows. Uh, but I think they're right now they're serving the community the best they uh, can at this moment. Uh, but there was a discussion on that to try to increase. Uh, service um, as the numbers go down. Um, economic development, we're meeting tomorrow night. Um, so we'll be discussing some of the things we discussed tonight and uh, we get a number of exciting new uh, developments that are proposed in the community, which I'm happy to hear about. And uh, so we'll hopefully I'll have something to talk about at our next meeting. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. All right, very good. How about Ms. Tronic? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, it's going to be a busy week for um, a bunch of my committees. The elementary building committee meeting is will be um, having their meeting on this Thursday, February 11th at 6 p.m. And lo and behold, the Tewksbury Events Committee is going to be having a meeting on Tuesday, the 11th um, at 7 p.m. looking for ways to kind of uh, bring the community together, hopefully as the spring is sprung and there's a little light at the end of the tunnel with the COVID virus and the events that are occurring that Mr. Montori just spoke to. So they're gonna try to see what they can do about putting some events together. Not sure how that's gonna work, but we'll to play it as it comes. And then next week on Tuesday, the local housing partnership will be meeting at 7 p.m. So um, that's what's going on with those committees. Looking forward to bringing back um, elementary projects uh, for those that drive by. It's going very well and is on target. Just spoke about the events and local housing is um, 
working on the NIMCOG in the regional and looking at consultants, which I brought up last time. So that kind of things will be on the agenda again um, for the meeting on the 16th. And I would just like to remind people, and I'm not great with dates and times, but I just want to check Mr. Montori last week because of the snowstorm, the uh, center of town would remind residents that the trash was delayed, but that is not tomorrow is trash day, correct? That is, <clears throat> that is correct. Okay, just checking. Um, just if I'm confused, maybe somebody else is as well. So I just want to kind of remind people that that was last week that it was delayed, not this week. And that's all I have, Mr. Chairman. And again, I just want to thank the members of the board for such uh, rich discussion um, at tonight's meeting and just a respectful way in which we all shared our uh, vast opinions. So I appreciate the work. Thank you. Very good call out. All right, perfect. How about Ms. Weldon? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a few things. Uh, I wanted to um, note that the Small Business Administration has extended their deadline to apply for economic injury loans um, through the end of the year, actually. Um, and so that's, that's information, information we got from NIMCOG, um, and I posted it on my page, but um, it's out there and we can get that information maybe um, on our COVID page from Mr. Montori or if we have access to that. Um, I held office hours virtually um, last week on a Thursday. Uh, Thursday night, that went pretty well. Um, we had a few takers, so I'll continue to do office hours um, virtually. Um, and some folks were able to kind of share with me some of their thoughts about, about different things going on in the community. Um, the beautification committee had some conversation about the Adopt an Island program, and maybe it's waning a little bit. So we're trying to figure out how we want to handle um, interest in our islands, um, if you want to continue with that. And then um, we had some conversation about um, creating a subcommittee to look at the Tewksbury Village design guidelines. So South Tewksbury, uh, that area on Wong Main Street from basically the post office to South Fire Station. Um, so we had, we had some comments about that, that that meeting can be watched and we'll see if we actually do have a, a subcommittee come forward or if we decide to uh, pursue another angle. Um, I noted uh, that Comcast, I got some complaints about Comcast suddenly charging more for their internet service. And um, I, I reached out to Mr. Montori to talk about, because these fees are going up and um, if we had any recourse through our host agreement, which is mainly, it's, it's just cable, it's not <clears throat> the internet, but um, there was some actual interesting findings there, and I wondered if Mr. Montori would be able to share that with the board. Um, because it was charging extra, uh, people were looking, getting notifications of higher charges for usage on their, on their rates because everybody's home working. And so it was outside of the contractual agreement most people have with the cable company uh, for their internet provision. So um, Mr. Montori, if you wouldn't mind. I'm not sure. I'll try to decipher what was uh, told to us. Um, we reached out to our representative um, at uh, Comcast uh, in regard to this particular issue. And uh, what she told us was um, obviously, uh, if, if anyone wanted to have a conversation with her more about this, they could. Um, she said that in regard to the um, price, the the pricing or the um, costs for the uh, the charges, they were providing their Northeast market uh, additional time to become familiar with their new plan, but they do have a new plan to charge customers who use uh, more than their data plan. I think their data plan um, they were introducing was 1.2 terabytes. Is, is that, was that correct, Jane, and what we saw? I think, yeah, and they could either move to an unlimited plan or if they used excess of that many terabytes, right. that much data, yeah. And the problem was um, they weren't giving anybody notification that when they went over that, or they, there were concerns that they weren't giving notification when people went over that uh, limit. Uh, according to um, our contact, um, 
they do uh, provide notice um, to them, whether it's through text, email, uh, phone calls. Um, they did talk about um, to help customers understand the plan, they provide uh, extensive information, uh, complimentary months, courtesy credits, uh, but it is a new plan that they're putting in place that they'll start charging people. It was delayed a little bit, uh, but they will be uh, moving forward with it. Um, so uh, if anyone does have um, uh, these type plans with uh, Comcast, they really need to watch how much um, usage, the data usage is, uh, because if they go over it, they will get charged uh, and they may not know they're going to get charged. Um, so we still have some more work to do on this to get uh, any information out to residents, but um, you know, we're still trying to understand it ourselves uh, since it was brought to our attention. Uh, but um, the real bottom line is um, residents are probably using data that they believe is unlimited. Uh, that's not unlimited uh, and they will see charges uh, for it uh, in the future. Motion detected at the Ms. Wellman, I'm not sure if that covered everything. Yeah, I think it's some love to stay on top of. I was originally concerned that it was um, usury. That everybody's kind of trapped at home with their kids streaming things and on, in you know, learning remotely and people doing work related calls remotely all the time. And, you know, everybody's using a lot more data than they are. Uh, they were typically, or like I stream the news while I'm on calls too, not right now, but typically. So, um, you know, we're using a lot of data and it just seemed like, um, all of these, all these charges that were paid by school districts because their kids are in school or paid by companies because everybody was working at a business place is now foisted off onto residents who are managing their own, um, their own data, their own plans. I was hoping that we would have some sort of recourse through our host agreement, but that's just strictly cable. Um, and I appreciate the manager uh, looking into that um, and reaching out to Comcast. Um, and it seems like it was very timely. People are all of a sudden like waking up to this sort of change. So um, it wasn't the first time that they had heard that this was a concern and they're delaying the rollout of it here. But it was, I, you know, it was something I wanted to be able to respond to and I appreciate the time taken to do that. Thank you. I have no further comments, Mr. Chairman. Very good. How about Mr. Brian Dick? Uh, nothing to add tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Okay, short and sweet for the reuse committee. Uh, was, things are picking up. I think pink, things are gonna really pick up. Um, if the residents recall, when I say the reuse committee, I'm talking about the Trahan School and the North Street School. So um, via town meeting, we secured a consultant that we're working with. Um, we're getting a lot of data um, in and like facts about the two parcels and about the two properties. So I think we'll be in a position to uh, maybe show the residents in an upcoming meeting, maybe do, uh, Brian, we're gonna secure a, a WebEx and really show the residents kind of what we've, um, what we've done in the last, you know, give or take eight months. And so I think really what we're gonna do next, the big steps is we're gonna meet with every boarding committee uh, within uh, within Tewksbury uh, to say, hey, we have these two parcels of land, what do you think about them? Again, from open space, the beautification, the planning board, we'll go right down the list. Um, and the second piece would be to reach out to residents. Um, to do a survey to say, hey, you know something, we do a blank canvas for the Tron, blank canvas for the North Street, what do you think? And so we'll make it nice and neat, a nice little survey. So I think the folks are gonna see that committee pick up, pick up some speed very quickly here in the next couple months. So that's all I had. So with that being said, I look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. A motion, I have a second? Second, Mr. Chairman. Okay, Mr. Crapton, how do you vote? Aye. Ms. Tronic? Aye. Ms. Wellman. Aye. Mr. Brian Dick. Aye. Do you have votes aye as well? Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Good night. Have a good night. Good night, everyone.